the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. That God has given to us eternal life. That God has given us eternal life. Has given to us. And this life in his, is in His Son. Is in His Son. And this life is in His Son. And this life is in His Son. He who was the Son. Has eternal life. He who was the Son has eternal life. I have the Son, so I have eternal life. We have the Son, so we have eternal life. He who was the Son. Has eternal life. We have the Son, so we have eternal life. I have the Son, so I have eternal life. I have the Son, oh yes, and I have eternal life. I have the sun. I have the sun. I have the sun. Prophesy. I have his life in me. His power lives in me. We have the sun. So we have eternal life. We have the sun. Just bless the name of the Lord for his manifold blessings in our midst. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Bless his name. Bless his name. God is worthy of praise. Bless your holy name. I sing your praises forever and I forget not your benefits. I bless your holy name. I sing your praises forever and I forget not your benefits. I will never forget. I will not forget, Lord, your benefit. How can I forget? I will not forget. How can I forget your benefit? I will never forget. I will not forget, Lord, your benefit. I will not forget. I will not forget. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to say thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Go ahead and bless him. You must have a reason to give him praise. You must have a reason because he is faithful. Lord, you have been faithful. The psalmist said, if the Lord had not been on my side, now may Israel sing. That if the Lord had not been by my side. Lord we thank you. For your deliverance. For your grace.
for your faithfulness for your mercies bless him for his faithfulness Lord we give you all the praise tonight we express our gratitude for your faithfulness for your bountiful blessings for the miracles for the signs for the wonders for the power of your word we give you praise come on bless him in the spirit Raka pariye ke te bade ke bale bo ko sople ke bale de ro sa Raka paka pariye ke te bala raba We bless you we bless you we bless you Oh holy Holy Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God oh, Holy Holy Blessed is he Who comes In the name of Hosanna 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 yeah. Hosanna Hosanna yeah. Hosanna, 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 eh, Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes. For thou art worthy, O God, to open the book and unlock the scrolls. For thou wast slain, and with your blood you have purchased men out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. And you have made us a people. We bless the one who was dead and now is alive and holds the keys lord we give you praise hallelujah every time we appear before his presence it is important that we cultivate the attitude of worship and of expressing our gratitude sammy said if the Lord has not been on our side, now may Israel say, Hallelujah. God has been faithful in the midst of all the chaos and the deaths and the lamentations around. He has preserved us. Believers must learn that it is an act of worship to give thanks. Bible says in Psalm 100, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. He said, come before him with singing. Hallelujah. It's important that we open up our hearts and express our gratitude. Let me tell you something. Every time you cease to see the relevance of God in your life, all he does is to take a step out of your life. And you will see the chaos that your life will become without him. Hallelujah. I am ever conscious of his presence. I realize that he designed us to be inadequate without him. And forever we are eternally grateful. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Please take on your Bibles. First and foremost, just walk to two or three people. Appreciate them. Walk up to two or three people. Just bless them. Give them a good hug.
Alléluia. Please be seated. God bless you. Father, we give you praise. Romans chapter 8. Tonight, the Lord is going to be provoking us. Hallelujah. Bible says, provoke one another to godliness. God is going to be challenging us. Our goal in this place is to build us, to equip ourselves. Hallelujah. To prepare the army of the Lord, the generals who will take charge. We are raising a takeover generation. A generation of men and women who understand their king, understand his ways, and understand his power. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Saviors shall come out of Zion that they shall judge the mount of Esau. God is depending on us and upon our generation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 from verse 18, it says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not compared, it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Verse 19 says, for the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Some version says that creation is waiting for the day and the time when God will reveal who his sons truly are. Hallelujah. Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. He said, Now are we the sons and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Hallelujah. And so tonight, God is going to challenge us it is our desire that we come to a point where we truly understand God's ways and his life and his power and his grace. For it is out of the abundance of this revelation that we'll be able to rule and to reign. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Lord, let your word come with fire in our spirits. Let your word challenge us. And equip us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Please bring out your Bibles, your writing materials. Verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba Father. He says, the Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. Verse 17, let's read together. One to read. The A part is my point of emphasis tonight. He says, and if children, then heirs. He says, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Tonight I want to give us a revelation of what it means to be a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. For many believers, the concept of being one, the concept of our oneness with Christ. I hope you realize that the whole goal of eternal life and the coming of the Spirit in our life is first and foremost to bring us into oneness. Hallelujah. The church is called the bride of Christ. And according to the book of Genesis, when God was speaking, instituting marriage, he told Adam, he says, Wherefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they two shall become what? One flesh. They two coming from different locations. In this holy matrimony, they become one flesh. And now the Bible is saying that the Holy Spirit comes to live in us as a testimony that god has agreed to bring us into oneness and the bible says if this statement is true then it means it tells us from verse 17 it says and if children in other words if god didn't lie if it is true that god is saying that he has brought us into oneness then it means that we are heirs hallelujah it says heirs of god and joint heirs joint heirs with christ 
I pray that your eyes will be open tonight to understand the power and the revelation behind not only being one with Christ, but being a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. The book of Esther, don't turn there. It's a prophetic book that reveals to us the power and the transition of the church of Christ. Coming into that point where we sit with the king. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand that we were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. This is the prophetic type of Esther, Hadassah. The Bible says she was cut off from the people. She was a slave girl in the countryside. Then the Bible says how that when King Ahasuerus banished Vashti as queen, the Bible says certain people were called. And Esther from nowhere came into a point where she was given the royal crown, the signet ring. Instantly she came into honor. And the Bible says that she was made to sit with the king. Hallelujah. And at that point, she had power and authority. You need to realize the implication of what it means to be a Christian. For many of us, being a Christian is just, I know that we have taught about vision and purpose and all of these things. But it is important for us to understand the supernatural dimension and the implication of being a Christian. Hallelujah. Being a Christian is not just one of the many religions we have on the earth. The implication of being a Christian is first and foremost that you have come into oneness. Say after me, oneness. Oneness. When you come into oneness, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 11, talking about Nimrod and the Tower of Babel, it says that God looked down and saw that the people, although there were many, he said the people is one. He didn't say are one. It may be grammatically wrong, but it's spiritually correct. He said the people, he saw that they were one. Hallelujah. Therein lies the revelation of the victory and the authority of the believer. That you realize that when you come into Christ, there is a literal translation. First and foremost, from the kingdom of darkness, the Bible says, into the kingdom of God's dear son. And then he calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of adoption. The one who is able to call different sons. What does it mean to adopt? To adopt means to pick someone who was not originally yours by hallelujah and bring the person to a point where he becomes a literal benefactor of your benevolence or whatever you have to a point that you can say this is an adopted child you give the child the exact same benefit the bible calls the holy spirit the spirit of adoption the one who is able to adopt the saint and bring him into that point where you are qualified by his grace and by the righteousness of christ to be an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. I've always given this example, but then let me use it again. Please, someone from come. Hallelujah. Now, all of you watch this. Assuming I own a company. Are you listening to me? I want to show you the revelation of oneness. And what it means for us to come into oneness and to be joint heirs with Christ. Assuming I own a company. And let's assume that Tosin is a cleaner in that company. Are you following me now? Is a cleaner just sweeping everywhere. And I decide to get married to her. Watch this. The moment. Are you listening to me? The exact moment the pronunciation is made by the pastor that I hereby declare you husband and wife. Listen, the implication is that in the realm of the spirit, God ceases to see two of us as two people. We become joined. Are you listening to me? In theology, we call it the doctrine of interpenetration. The mystery of two people, two separate entities becoming one. This is why the church is called the bride that comes into oneness with christ the church is the eve of adam are you listening to me 
just like follow me please in the book of genesis the bible makes us to understand that adam came into the scene and eve was there are you following me now the goal the authority everything was vested upon adam but the bible makes us to understand that when satan wanted to get that authority from adam he came through eve are you following me now eve was the pride and the glory of adam because she was cut out from him hallelujah and the bible makes us to understand in the new testament that christ has now become that second adam are you listening to me now the eve that belongs to that adam is no longer a singular person is a body the bride of christ we have now become the eve of this second adam are you following me now so that we are supposed to be joined the exact same way adam was joined to eve and so you see satan is using the same strategy in genesis wanting to get adam he came through eve this is why satan is hunting the church who is the bride the eve of this adam hallelujah but then it is important for us to understand the implication of being the bride of christ instantly Tosin becomes a partaker of everything I own. She begins to bear my name. Are you following me now? Now watch this. Whether you like her or not is not the issue. There is a present day reality. Are you listening to me? She can tell the driver, please take me somewhere. And the driver will say, you, you, Tosin. And somebody will say, stop calling her Tosin. She's no longer Tosin. Now watch this. If Tosin does not know that revelation, and there is a bully who has been troubling her before the marriage are you listening to me the bully can look at her and say if you like become a gas wife that's your cup of tea you are going to sweep this place what happens although it is a present i have never denied that she's my wife but she will keep sweeping as though we are not married are you listening to me she will keep sweeping and her words will not have power because she has not understood the implication of being my wife are you following me now if for some reason i get to find out and she suddenly comes into that revelation that come i have the right and the power to suck you out of this company and to bring you and if you reject and do not stand by my words the one who made me his wife it will now be his responsibility to prove whether he lied by telling me i'm his wife or not so the defense is not your job are you listening to me the defense for it has god designed a man to protect a woman is that correct a man is supposed to defend so if the woman speaks on behalf of the man and anyone that contends with that statement the man is supposed to come in this is how god designed and so if she talks to that man and says do not harass me listen the fact that i'm married to her does not change the bully automatically he will keep being a bully he will test her understanding of the implication of what it means to come into this new position now she's used to sweeping she's not used to somebody driving her in a jeep are you listening to me and calling her good morning ma so sometimes her mindset can make her so humble she say let me just take this broom and help you but whether or not she chooses that that is not the present reality according to the agreement now when she comes into an understanding one day she will take the marriage certificate and come and summon all the workers and say by the terms that are in this certificate that i'm showing you it has been written here can you see my name signed here are you following me now and the moment she's speaking i will come and stand by her side and said i hope you are hearing from that moment listen from that moment it has not only been that now watch this two scenes here number one it is true that i'm married to her but she's still suffering are you following me now she's still suffering does that change the fact that i'm faithful are you listening to me marriage is the best description of our oneness and the implication of what it means to be joint heirs joint heirs are you following me now now the difference between a co-heir and a joint heir is this let me have another person yes please if the music director is my business associate we are not joint heirs 
Are you following me now? We are called co-heirs. Because if we need capital to start a project, hallelujah, assuming we need one million naira, I can bring 600,000 and he brings how much? 400,000. Are you following me now? Our profit is shared according to our contribution. Are you following me now? That means the day he decides to get angry, we're in trouble. Are you following me now? So, but in this case, she didn't do anything. She only told me yes. Are you following me now? And everything I have instantly belongs to her. There is a difference between being a joint heir and a co-heir. There are many believers that are trying to be co-heirs with God. The Bible never calls us co-heirs with Christ. Don't be so spiritual that you argue the reality of what is in the word of God. It was inspired by the spirit. A joint heir is number one. One who has come into oneness. Oneness with Christ. Oneness with Christ. That means you possess his life. The life of God is in you. Are you listening to me? You must understand the power and the implication of having what we call eternal life. Eternal life is not the life you will have when you get to heaven. No, that's not eternal life. Eternal life is God's life supplanting your biological life literally so that you begin to exist with another dimension of life it's a supernatural life higher than all the limits in this realm either god is lying or you believe it the implication of being one with christ is first and foremost that we are partakers of his divine nature not partakers of his nature there is a reason why the bible says that nature is divine partakers of his divine nature hallelujah that means we are connected watch this we are connected every time christ is honored if it is true that we are one the church must be honored that's why every time you praise God, you also receive a portion of that blessing. Every time you truly praise and worship God and nothing happens to you, then it, it means God has lied. You see the power of praise and worship. Because whatever is happening to him must also happen to you. This is the implication of being one. The, the Israelites understood this. He said, touch them not, they are the apple of my eyes. Hallelujah. Do you realize the implication of being one with Christ? Watch this. I am one with Tosin. When we go to the market, we are going together. Are you listening to me? Every time anybody wants to speak evil against me, hallelujah, assuming I am somewhere and she's not there, if I hear you talking about her, what, what do you expect me to do? Just smile and say, wow, you are a very smart person. I live to promote her interest in her own realm whenever she hears you saying anything about me because we are one are you following me now the concept of oneness does not mean you are in the same location necessarily that you have been joined in life in purpose in vision are you listening to me her pain becomes my pain her joy becomes my joy her vision becomes my vision do you understand the implication of being a joint heir with Christ hallelujah that means if jesus is righteous i am righteous oh yes whether i feel like it or not it, either god is lying it's a present day reality accept it this is the truth in christ so every time i stand before principalities and powers the first revelation in the realm of the spirit is the one to find out whether you are in Christ or not. Outside of Christ, you do not have a platform to do anything. Are you listening to me? The basis for everything in the spirit is that you are in Christ. In Christ. Outside of Christ, you do not have a say. You do not have a platform. So in Christ, when I speak to a sick body, 
and I command that cancer to leave. What they are, see, I'm speaking on behalf of the authority and the government of heaven. Are you listening to me? If the person does not get healed, are you listening to me? It's left for the one I'm representing to validate his reputation because it's at stake there. Are you listening to me? And so the Bible says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, I fear no evil. Why? For thou, who is the thou? Thou art with me. It says, if it is true that we are children, that we have been adopted, called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation, then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, partakers of his divine life. Partakers of his divine life. What is the life of God? What is it? What is the divine life of God? Let me tell you what the divine life of God is. The divine life of God is everything that makes him God. Everything. Every attribute that can be found because Christ is the express image of God. So whatever, Christ came to give us a sample of everything that can be found in the Father. Hallelujah. And so Christ is the expression. The Bible calls him the express image of the Father. What does that mean? That means that if it is true that the life of God is in us, then Christ becomes our standard. That everything that flowed through Christ, his glory, his power, his grace, should find expression in us. Sons of adoption. So if I speak in the realm of the spirit and my words have no implication, then it means my oneness has a problem in the realm of the spirit. It means it has not been established and it has not been recognized. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now watch this. Before we got married, she had her ideologies and her limitations. Watch this. When we get married and I'm the man and she's the woman, who submits to who? What does it mean to submit? To bring your strength and your value system and everything to conformity. Are you listening to me? That, that becomes the basis. Because although I am married to her, she can choose to take her mindset of being a sweeper. It doesn't change the fact that I'm her husband. But she's going to suffer the consequence. And by implication, it's going to affect me. Do you understand? So the Bible says, this is God's present day reality. Now come into alignment. That's what we call the renewing of the mind. Coming into alignment with God's perspective about you. And God's reality about you. Let me tell you what God has to say about his bride. Hebrews chapter 2. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 5. Are you there? God's purpose. Hmm. I want to show you what it means to be a joint heir with Christ. We are examining the implications of being joint heirs with Christ. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come of which we speak. Verse 6. But one in a certain place talking about David. Psalms 8. Testifying saying. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? 7. It says thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And did set him over what? Read it. Read it. It's in your Bible. And you set him where? Is it in your Bible? Did he say the man grew there? He said God set him. That is an appointment. God set him and said come. I set you over everything I have created. Tapo satabariakata. 
He said, God set him over the works of his hand. God says, the jurisdiction of your rulership is everything that came from my hand. So long as I am the one who created it, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm, I bring, I pay. get what I'm preaching. Are you getting me tonight? You must get this as a revelation. So what did God create? Start naming them. One to go. Name them. You're laughing. What did God create? Because the Bible tells us that he put all of those things in subjection to man. The atmosphere. The animals. Weather. Territories. Land. The resources in the deep. He said God has placed man he brought all of these things in subjection to man. That is the reward you get for being the bride of the owner of the whole world. Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. Now you have become his bride. And he says, look, I put all things under your subjection. I put all things you people name everything God created. You didn't name them all. Satan. Demons. The fallen angels. He said, I put them in subjection. Principalities. Spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. I put them in submission. Let's read on. Now watch this. It says, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He did what? He said he left. Come on, read it. It's in your Bible. That means God didn't make any mistake. That later you say, ah, I forgot to put Satan under your feet. No. He said God was thorough. He made no mistake. He put all things. All things. God is not scratching his head saying, what kind of costly mistake did I make? The bride. The bride. The eve of this second Adam. Do you realize that even when it comes to calling Jesus back to the earth, it is the spirit and the bride that says come. The spirit alongside with the bride call their husband and say come the spirit and the bride say come I give you the highest oh I'm not ordinary I'm not ordinary I give you the loudest I lift my holy hands. I express to the King. I give you, I give you, help me. I give you the high praise. I give you, Lord, we give you praise you for what you have I done for us. Give you the high Listen. Listen. I give Listen. you. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Watch this. I need to deliver us from a Christianity that allows every and anything to happen around us. The Bible says God has brought, I, I use this lady to give you something. That means, see, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth he said but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein hear this he says then you shall make your way who will make it it's in your bible you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success 
So your finances is under your control. Your health under your control. Your life under your control. Your longevity in life under your control. Your victory. He says God put all things under subjection to the man he created. God made no mistake. So everything, listen, listen. The Holy Ghost comes to live in you and directs you to champion the course of your destiny according to the knowledge that is gained from the word of God. And then Jesus came, watch this. Jesus came. Listen, let me tell you the implication of the coming of Jesus. Do you realize that Jesus came and acted the part of the woman for you to watch? He came and became what he wants you to be. Walked upon the earth. Showed you victory over sickness. Victory over everything. Unconditional love. They wanted to throw him from a cliff. He walked through them. Died. Conquered death. They were looking for money. He was stranded. He said, go to the fish. I am convinced that the money came at the mouth the moment he spoke. He said, I am so powerful. I can use anything. Go to that fish. Bring out a coin. In John 21, listen, when he resurrected in John 21, the Bible says the disciples were struggling to catch fish. There was no fish. At his word, they caught fish and the net was about to sink. The Bible says Peter wore his clothes and ran and he came and met Jesus already roasting fish. Where did he get his own from? He said to no angel. Listen. I will tell you why he said to no angel. Do you realize that Lucifer was a fallen angel? Do you realize that the angels of God are loyal? Satan as a fallen angel is claiming ownership. And God is saying let me inform you. I did not give any angel, any angel, the earth. So any angelic being in heaven or in the earth that claims ownership of the earth is doing it illegally. It says to no angel did he ever say that he will be a partaker. He did not put the world under the subjection of any angel. The secret of victory in life is to accept by faith. Are you listening to me? That you are supernatural. Because you are the bride of Christ. You have come into oneness. We are partakers. I am a partaker. See, that's why my life will keep soaring from glory to glory. It's not because my name is Joshua Selman. I understand the implication of what it means to be one with Christ. Take me anywhere. I know the end. Glory. Glory. The glory of God. Hear me. So when you understand this, there is nothing in the kingdom called disadvantage. Cancel it out of your life. Quickly. Yeah. What then is the basis of saying you are disadvantaged? Are you listening to me? It doesn't matter what situation. You know you are victorious. Because you are the bride of Christ. When Jesus faced situations, he didn't cry and wail and do as if he didn't have anything to do about it the bible says even jesus knew what to do he knew what to do hallelujah when they met him with a hard question they said this woman was called caught in adultery and moses wrote in his law that if a woman be caught in adultery she should be stoned so what do you have to say suddenly he tapped from the bank of the wisdom of the spirit and he simply answered them he says he who does not have sin among you should cast the first stone the bible says they were convicted from their hearts and they threw back the stone from the oldest it's beautiful that he started from the oldest because he was matured enough to have that common sense from the oldest down to the youngest 
and he looked at the woman and said woman where are thine accusers he said neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more do you believe that you are one with Christ do you believe it the times that are coming will test that revelation hallelujah now from the story I gave here watch this from the story I gave here how did she demonstrate her oneness how did she demonstrate her oneness my wife in this example hallelujah number one she came into terms with it is that correct number two she began to announce it using the marriage certificate as the basis are you following me now that's when you come into that the first revelation is to accept it accept that in christ is your inheritance to live a prosperous life many of us do not believe that this is possible or oh, not in nigeria who told you it's possible to live in divine health it's not just possible it's your heritage it's not a product of fasting and prayer it's god's present day gift for you as being his bride the only limit you have in christ is the limit that jesus too has his limit becomes your limit that's the reason why listen watch this every time god speaks to you he speaks to you from his realm of ability and reality god can look at you and say most um he says moses tell the people to move forward was god stupid was he not seeing the red sea he said moses tell them to move forward you do not know the person you are in partnership with ask them to move forward when joshua was afraid he said joshua be strong as i was with moses i am with you be strong and of good courage every time god is about to set you on assignment he reminds you that you are not alone this is the secret of great men this is the secret of generals they came to a point where they they got a revelation every time i pray for the sick the lord taught me this that's why many times i take a while before i start ministering i'm coming into that alignment that i am not alone i'm not alone so i sing songs that reminds me of his presence look at what god is doing in this ministry does it not tell you that these are not the works of a man what kind of intelligence can make a young man or young people to do this doesn't it tell you that it looks like there is a bigger person Young Cho says the Holy Spirit my senior partner and with the ministry and oneness with that senior partner he produced the largest church in the world till date an ordinary Korean that does not even understand English very well so it's not about oratory that Americans teach how to do this seven steps to do these stories if you are not in your oneness with him you will be shocked are you understanding this tonight i'm here to provoke you and then we'll pray that you are one with christ so as you're writing your test and writing your exams you are one with christ you are one with christ you are one with christ that's why the sister could get her her job out of over 500 or 200 people see when you see some people blessed for no reason stop looking at them look at the person they are in unity with see listen let me tell you the implication of coming into oneness with someone when david became king in israel he said is there any man in saul's house that i may show him kindness who was brought they brought a cripple called mephibosheth hey. mephibosheth sat at the royal table although he was crippled because he was called by the king mephibosheth was called and he was honored the same food the king ate he ate 
Hallelujah. That's why you can see a man who does not speak good English, but God is still using him. You can see a man who is not fine, is not handsome. It doesn't matter. Demons still cry out because it's not about your looks. It's about your oneness. 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 In many African countries, they don't preach in English. They cast out devils in their local dialects. The devils have never argued that they don't understand the language. Never. I am one with Christ. His supernatural life lives in me. Are you following me now? So you are not weak. Many of you are waiting until the day you become a man or a woman of God. No. This revelation has an implication. There is nothing I would do in this life that I would not emerge at the top. It sounds like pride, but I'll be lying if I don't tell you this. It's not because of me. There is no project by the grace of God. All from the time he and I started, there is nothing we have laid our hands to do that we did not accomplish. Not because we are great men. Are you listening to me? Because we have a great husband. So you can walk in divine health. Why? I am one with him. His life lives in me. That no demon can come and disturb you. Listen. Can I challenge you friends? Get angry and solve this issue of demons once and for all in your life. Hear me. It was not designed to be a struggle. There's no demon that has threatened Jesus from his throne in heaven. Are you listening to me when you are entering a car to travel be conscious of the fact that he is with you are you understanding what i'm saying there are deaths happening everywhere i'm sure you have been getting reports of people dying and all of this i feel very sad and grieved in my heart and we pray that god will keep these people but now that you are alive do you believe your life is by chance I'm challenging you tonight do you realize there is nothing called chance in the realm of the spirit everything happens as a result of cause and effect you are not gathered today by chance are you listening to me it is not by chance Jesus did not become Lord of all by chance you don't become healthy by chance. Are you listening to me? You don't become prosperous by chance. You don't become anointed by chance. It's by light. The illumination of the word of God engrafted in your spirit. You don't speak to Satan and say, Satan, leave. And then he leaves by chance. There is no chance about it. Am I convincing you? Get angry and believe this. So if you are to advance in your life, it's not going to be by chance. Satan is not invading this world by chance. Channel O is not taking over by chance. Are you listening to me? MTV is not moving by chance. What's the name of this Nigerian rapper that's those guys that sing all kinds of of songs that you cannot even resist buying the album they sing rubbish and nonsense is that called chance some of them slept in graves for days received powers and anointings came back wrote nonsense on tapes and there is a force moving men beyond their control come on nothing happens in life by chance success is not by chance long life is not by chance all the people in the early days of the bible lived long not by chance and he slept with his fathers and he lived a good old age and slept with his father and he lived a good old age and slept with his father 
we travel all the time i have never feared death in my life are you listening to me why We live in a hostile environment. We preach and we walk among people. All kinds of people. I've gone to Yola. I've gone to Maiduguri. I went to Maiduguri on road. I missed my flight. I went on road on a Friday. And we started the journey in the afternoon. You need the word of God to come alive in your spirit. I am convinced that no man can kill me until my assignment is over. This is a revelation I have given to myself. If it were death, I would have died since. Are you listening to me? You don't know the story of my life. If you know the story of my life, you will know that the word of God is not a mistake. I was diagnosed of fungal infection. My head was literally rotten. Are you listening to me? My mother is alive. I have classmates you can ask them there was no drug that was used on me everything the doctors were tired i moved from teaching hospital to teaching hospital i've seen the power of god if you live your life to chance you will die a beggar in this life there's no chance in this life everything happens as a definite operation of god's principles I've been hit by a car. Are you listening to me? I've met with armed robbers on the road. I have met demons. What has happened again? All kinds of things. My eyes, my eyes. I have been that demons have oppressed me. Oh, demons oppressed me for a long time in my life. And today we keep soaring as if Satan does not exist. We live and we move. We plan our activities with no room for Satan. You think it's Satan's will for you to be hearing this word and to be building yourself in grace? See, Paul said we make our boast in the Lord. The problem is there is no other way to communicate this without sounding like you are boasting. I'll never be poor in this life. Never. It's not a confession. It's a present. It's the, I will never, the same way I can never be a woman. That's the exact same way. Never. I can never be a failure in this life. Please don't take it for pride. I am speaking on account of the revelation of my oneness with Christ. You don't need to travel to Dubai or Hawaii for greener pastures. That's nonsense. The Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. He didn't mention the name of any country in this world. In green pastures. Green pastures is a spiritual location where the word of God gains consistent fruitfulness in your life. Hi. Whatsoever he doeth Are you following me now? Jacob went to the house of Laban. Suddenly, Laban began to prosper. And this was his testimony. He said, I come to terms with the fact that I have been blessed for your sake. When the ark of the covenant was being restored, it was temporarily kept in Obededom's house. And within that period, Obededom flourished. Listen, kill all of the excuses and all of the things you are putting and take charge from tonight take charge because the earth has been given unto you your finances will not grow a miracle and change one day your health will not change one day demons will not just come are you listening to me things will begin to change the day that you receive as an act of humility what christ has done for you everywhere you take me the grace of god will distinguish me it's not because of me 
Esther was scattered among many women but something separated her are you listening to me do you believe what I'm teaching tonight it must have an implication in your life so you expect the blessings that come to your life on account of your oneness with Christ everywhere I go to becomes the garden of Eden why the garden of Eden because that's, that was where God designed for man in the first place and the Holy Spirit leads you your life becomes beauty and glory do you believe this so it is within your power to change your finances are you hearing me don't say I'm young don't say I'm old it's within your power to stop demons from oppressing your life it's within your power to speak and expect a manifestation in your life if I bless you sir honestly with all humility you are blessed you will see it in your life hallelujah so your life is supposed to have prophetic implication that anywhere you are something is about to happen let me use the words of Paula De Farrasen, that everywhere you go something is about to everywhere Jesus went to you knew that just give a little time you hear that something has happened there he, he, he always there was a prophetic implication so anywhere God takes you because you are one with him there should be a prophetic implication of your presence he takes me into a wilderness I turn that wilderness into a fruitful vine and I turn that fruitful vine into a forest mission accomplished he takes me to the valley of the shadow of death where there are dry bones i turn every dry bone into an exceeding great army mission accomplished the bible says that weak and beggarly men were brought to the cave of adulam where david was and david turned those people into mighty warriors to the time to a point where david said oh that i would drink of the pool of bethlehem and the bible says three of those men killed all the armies and went and fetched water and brought for david he said the men were mighty they fought with swords and their hands cleaved to the sword it will not fall mastery you can turn anybody that's why i don't care who you are when you sit under this anointing there is transformation your life must change because of the prophetic implication of the presence of god Great men and women like Catherine Kuhlman, William Branham, they understood their oneness and the prophetic implication was across their communities. Hallelujah. And so you speak over your life and you declare. You may look ordinary, but not when you begin to speak. When you begin to speak and declare that I am blessed. Oh, I'm blessed in the city blessed in the country i see no limits the hand of god is upon me i see no limitations in my life the strength of god is at work in me no weakness the bible says none was weak none was feeble all through their road in the wilderness none was sick none was feeble their clothes grew with them joint heirs joint heirs Say after me, I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Say, I'm a joint heir with Christ. I partake in royalty. I partake in dominion. I partake in prosperity. I partake in divine health. Yes. Yes, you must prophesy this. This must become your confession on account of what Christ has done. hallelujah you must be open to prophecy and to visions why the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy and the Holy Spirit is the one who testifies about Jesus and he lives in you he is the spirit of prophecy quickened in your inner man and so you can see so you can hear don't say I can't hear the voice of God my sheep hear my voice 
you plot evil against me you are only going to frustrate yourself because I will climb you and your your plan and just walk he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies thou anointed my head with oil the testimony will keep being from glory to glory from glory to glory oh yes from glory to glory you will never hear about a worse tomorrow it's from glory to glory are you listening to me that whatever challenge you face in the midst of that challenge you stamp it and you keep smiling as if you are not seeing anything I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in His grace. I believe in who Jesus is. I believe in my oneness with Him. Hallelujah. A gentleman here, some groups of young men, I think they were in the occult or something. They used to come for koinonia right from when they were in that occultic thing. And so they came and they were confessing to me. Can I be honest with you? I wasn't even interested in what they were saying. I was going to have a meeting soon. It wasn't an issue. Whatever the plan is, the Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side. Ten thousand. See, it's a different thing if I have not faced some of these things and I'm talking. Then it's easy to say he's shouting. Let me tell you, there are few things you have faced in life that I have not faced. I tell you with all humility. If it's financial stress, we have faced it. Are you listening to me? I am not married but we have enjoyed the burden of being real fathers in terms of the financial implication on people in terms of the psychological implication i know that the word of god works you must convince yourself and stop arguing it there are many of you that it has not yet become a reality it's easy to jump in church and to talk that you tell yourself yea do i walk through the valley of the shadow of death I am a partaker of his divine nature. If he is a king, then I am a king. There is no true king without authority. Hallelujah. And what you see the Lord doing in our midst is the awe-inspiring hand of God. His signature that truly shows that he is the husband of the bride. That's why we give him all the glory. That's why there's no reason to brag and make noise. But I cannot but tell you this is the truth this is your heritage in Christ that when you come into the revelation of your oneness with Christ it doesn't matter whether you walk through the valley of the shadow of death you can change things stop saying things will change start changing them one day in the sweet by and by things will be better when Our parents said this from the days of your youth. Oh, things will change, I know. Since when you were crawling, things will change. Things will change. Now you're almost getting married, things will change. And what your father didn't tell you, he's now telling you. He said, thank God you are now a man. You will change the things. hallelujah I find it very difficult teaching on things like this because the only way to teach about this is to it sounds like you are bragging about it but there's no other way to express it in that truth are you listening to me it's just like looking at your friends and saying I am married you know sometimes you can feel am I hurting them but is it a lie Or that they made your father a senator. And you say, my daddy just became a senator. Some things, as painful as it is to convey them, they are the truth. Jesus said, before your father Abraham, I am. It wasn't a lie. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. How about Jesus? 
he would see people who were older than him and he was saying my little children see see i hope you realize that everybody the disciples that were older than jesus were older than him by more than two years because all his colleagues two years and below were killed when he was small so peter peter was married because jesus healed his mother-in-law so peter he was rebuking satan out of peter and he called them little children a man who was born in their presence this is what pain the people they say is this not joseph's son enough is enough you this small boy just like they look at us and speak and say how can a small boy like you say you are prophesying to people paul said i am what i am by the grace of god i am what i am in as much as we try to be humble he has anointed us we cannot deny it as much as we try i am blessed I am victorious is the truth from God's standpoint. We are a blessed people. Accept it. And give him glory for it. We are dressing nice. Let God be praised. Hallelujah. It is because of what Christ has done. I apologize if we sound proud. Are you listening to me? But I'm challenging you. It is what he gave us. He gave us. It's an inheritance in Christ. That's why the worshippers minister like angels. They minister with the revelation that they are one. That's why the media keep moving from glory to glory. It's not by chance. That's why the ushers keep moving by, from grace to grace see listen that's why we will keep getting sinners saved sinners will keep coming and they'll keep getting born again no devil will stop them because it's the authority of christ that is in motion are you listening to me for four years we kept meeting while on campus many people will come in the night for four years some of you never slept between sunday and monday in the rain in the sun no chair no seat no balloon no poster how can you explain that people criticize us of doing jazz they criticize us of doing everything they still say it till today till tomorrow people hear of the miracles and they talk did that leg really grow did that hand grow did the ss change see in christ you are a wonder you are a sign and a wonder. Are you listening to me? In Christ. When John first stands to prophesy, when Manasseh prophesies, he says, How oh, are these people? These people have taught something. You have robbed something on your. Rob what? Rob what? Hallelujah. Many of you are surprised to see how changed and transformed you are. You gave up on yourself, but see what God has done in your life today. It is a product. I'm challenging you. From tonight, realize that you are a partaker of his royalty. You are not weak. You are not beggarly. You have the power to bless. You have the power to call for things that be not as though they were. Create a future out of the word of God. Your words have prophetic implications. Speak as the bride of Christ that you are. Hallelujah. I say it with all humility. Ask all the leaders. From the time we started Koinonia, by the grace of God and to the glory of the Father above, we have never had a meeting. Ask them. Never had a meeting to discuss and say, where will we get the money for this week? No. Hallelujah. Where is it coming from? Have we ever come to rob your house? Did you ever see me with something on my face? And I say, man, I say, through the fence, this way. Every Thursday night. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. 
you are one with Christ. His ability flows through you. His wisdom flows through you. I can never meet a challenge in my life. Give me time, I will solve it. Give me time. I will disengage my wisdom and tap into a higher wisdom. Take me anywhere. It doesn't matter what the limitations are. There is an ability in me. I have knowledge. Epignosis is the knowledge of the spirit beyond my age, beyond my level of experience, beyond my exposure. When I speak to you, I engage the ability of the spirit. If I bless you, you are blessed. Hear me. It's not because my name is Joshua Selman. That is your heritage in Christ. That is your heritage in Christ. You can bless. You can speak. Prophesy. You're tired of sickness. Tell yourself, I refuse sickness. I refuse it. Stop giving excuses for it. Every time you have ideas and projects, nothing is coming in your head. Lay hands and say, I engage the ability of the spirit bigger than my own. You are in class and a curse is threatening you. Get angry. Many of you are afraid of your exams. There are sicknesses that come when you are about to write your exam. Many of you have already bought all the drugs. You have arranged them. Many of you are already worried now. Where will I get the money to buy provisions during exams? And you have started thinking. You have, you have been typing text for three days. Hiding it in your draft. About the kind of lie you will give your parents to send you money. You say, ah, my father knows. I used this one last time. Where will you change and believe the word of God? Let God be true. And let every man be a liar. Do you not believe that God can move men? To bless you hallelujah your roommate is complaining every time she has epilepsy she has epilepsy every time you come you lay your hands and say how is your epilepsy don't just laugh about it we are going to pray I'm challenging you God will never take responsibility for your future to the degree that you should take it his responsibility is to watch over his word to perform it Kenneth Hagin please let me have someone come just say sir Kenneth Hagin go and read his book I believe in visions this was his encounter Jesus was speaking to him just stand there Jesus was speaking to him are you listening to me and suddenly a demon came in between them and the demon began to jump and Jesus kept speaking. Can you imagine? How can a demon come to insult the king of kings and the lord of lords? Jesus kept speaking. And he wasn't hearing Jesus because the demon was shouting and making noise. At a point, Kenneth E. Hagin, he was angry. He felt embarrassed. How can Jesus Christ, the one who died and rose again, he's speaking and a demon is jumping. And at a point by divine illumination, Kenneth Hagin looked at the demon and said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And the demon disappeared and left. Hear what Jesus told him. He said, if you did not do anything about it, there is nothing I would have done. Oh God, when will you change my life? The day you accept the fact that you are one with Christ and begin to take your rightful place. In Christ hallelujah this is one of the blessings of prayer because it offers you the opportunity to speak to Hagar to declare the Bible says Job 22 verse 28 it says and thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee it said where the word of a king is there is power words have prophetic implications i don't waste my words because i realize they carry power are you listening to me true believers are not noisemakers they understand the prophetic implication of their words the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake because their job is to accomplish the words that are spoken by the saints 
we are going to pray and make some decrees over our lives are you listening to me from today realize that you are ruling and you are reigning with christ say after me i am royalty i am one with christ my presence has prophetic implications yes when you come into a room your roommates should start dancing and rejoicing there are some people you can do anything to be roommates with you can pay for the room and say come somehow you know that their presence carry prophetic implication look at how they sought after jesus christ they just wanted his presence in a place because his presence carried prophetic implications every time i go to a house or i go everywhere i am conscious of his presence and so when i step in and sit down i know that the king of glory is sitting as i speak i am his ambassador i am his bride he is committed to back me up jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 he says amplified he says that god is alert and active watching over his word to perform it hallelujah there are implications of being a joint heir with christ that you have the righteousness of christ and you are the righteousness of christ say after me i am the righteousness of christ above condemnation above guilt yes this is god's present reality above guilt satan cannot look at paul and say saul you used to persecute the church paul was so free of guilt that he could say his testimony and go and sleep about it he said i paul used to persecute the church and he didn't feel bad about it he went and slept the greatest proof that you have conquered an issue is that you can talk about it freely are you listening to me divine health is your heritage is your heritage in christ i emphasize divine health from your mind from your spirit are you listening to me you have headache when you are writing exams someone i had someone gave a testimony some weeks ago that used to sleep in the exam hall many of you don't sleep you have all kinds of pills in your house you have to take five or six you are less than 25 you're already taking pills as if you are 70 years while the bible says the age their age will be like the age of a tree hallelujah i'm not against medication don't don't take me wrong i'm only challenging you not to be complacent over things that are taking the place of the word of god in your life are you listening to me you are doing your project and there's no idea your lecturer calls you dull say holy spirit i may be dull in myself but let's work together and shock this man let him know there is a wisdom he said i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say you are going for your defense you are fidgeting the bible says when you stand before them you shall not be afraid of what to say for in that very same hour it will not be you speaking but the spirit of your father hallelujah when you stretch your hands to bless a man they look ordinary you just add a bar with it yes but it has prophetic implications that when you lay your hands upon this lady and say sweetheart you are blessed suddenly the heavens remember the meeting last week the heavens begin to shift and to change to accommodate what you have spoken hallelujah there are things in our lives that we have left the responsibility for god every day i keep speaking i say i'm established as a man i'm established if you're waiting for your job to establish you be sure you'll be established at age 50. i've said it here let me challenge the guys before we pray how much is one block have you asked how much is one block how much eh 200 
110 naira. How many of them do you, how much is the salary you will collect net? Aside from tight and your parents and other. The moment you get a job, the hands that are waiting to receive the salary will run you in deficit. Your father, your mother, all the people that you are going to bless. And those people, you will bless them legitimately. Hallelujah. Marriage right now is like a building project. You build foundation and then you breathe it. You rest. And then when these people that carry scaffold for building, there's something they say, oh, Jeve, hey. And then they say, oh, yeah, let's go. And then they move. Except God helps you. Except you come into alignment. Do you realize the prophetic implication of creating your future by speaking? This is not about being a Pentecostal. This is God's weapon. Kings reign by their words. If it is true that you are a partaker of God's divine nature, then it is your job to begin to paint your destiny in the place of prayer. That's why, see, prayer is not just a ritual to feel spiritual and to fall. It is God's tool for spiritual architecture. You build your life. I don't just allow anything happen in my life and then you say whatever will be, will be. Let me tell you the truth. is what you don't want that will be. When you leave a farm without plowing it, something will grow. What's the name? What did you define with in your primary science? Some of you jump class. What is it called? Unwanted plants. They are plants, but they are unwanted. So tonight I'm challenging you that you are a joint heir with Christ. You must tell yourself, I refuse to die until my assignment is over and I will transit with dignity and honor. Satan will tell you, you are the one that has the big mouth to say this. Every time he tells you, remember the story. Where's Tosin? One more time, please come again. Remember the, all of you look at her so that as you pray, I face every time Satan wants to speak. Remember, the bully in my story is Satan. I'm speaking a parable now. You are not like the disciples of old. You are supposed to ask me to interpret. And then I'll say, the bully is Satan. The husband is the husband man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Although she has been married into royalty, her lack of knowledge or taking steps in that regard still crippled her. Do you know that every time we accuse God, God feels very bad on the throne because he ever remains faithful. Are you listening to me? You must rise up. The Bible says arise. You must arise before you shine. Arise. Shake off the dust. Tell yourself the Lord according to Hebrews 2 has put all things. Where? Where? Where is Satan? Where is poverty? Where is sickness? Where is failure? You must believe it. Don't just say, Kai, this koinonia, we are behaving like children. You, you better take it seriously. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Come on, just pray in the spirit for a while. Pray in the spirit for a while. Walk around. Walk around. Come on. Walk around. Le baka parata bosete. Le bre de bo shatara. Zebra non zebra di bondi ne bo satali brada sa sabre di ba. Katali ba kore bo shatali bandi ne bo sabre di ba. Le pa. Le ko pariye ya ba katala ba. Bado bre de bo shatara. Le baka bo sasi katara. Engle kete ba kese kene bo. Pare katali ba kore bo ni ke bo satara. Pray in the spirit. Charge up your spirit man Because we are about to prophesy We are about to decree We are about to establish Come on walk around Walk around Pray 
my prosperity is under my control. My destiny. she I am ready Hallelujah. Listen. All of you listen, please. Let me teach you how to change things in life. Let me teach you how to change things. Many of you don't know how to change things in the spirit. Let me teach you. It's not just about blindly praying in tongues. Let me teach you something. Do you know what the Bible calls Yazar? The power of creative imagination. Are you listening to me? Every time you are praying in tongues and you are praying to the end that you want to establish something in the spirit. Are you listening to me? As you are praying in tongues, employ the power of of prophetic imagination put that limitation before your eyes are you listening to me and pray squarely like a priest if you are speaking against health or sickness see it see yourself rising in health are you listening to me and then you will begin to be conformed to what you are seeing if you are speaking about your finances begin to see the new you Walking in finances, in grace, in glory. Don't just pray blindly. Many of us are here tonight to end certain oppressions of Satan in our lives. We are in need of the power of God. There are families that are represented here that the handwriting of Satan is upon them. We are trusting God to bring liberty. Please let there be no vacant chairs. Let the people have the chairs if they are. Hallelujah. There are some of you who are coming because you came to receive the fire. There are ministers. There are ministries. There are organizations that are here to receive the fire and take it back. There are other people who are here to be healed. You've been diagnosed by the doctors. Hallelujah. Or you've been afraid to go to the hospital because of what you think they will tell you. There are people who are here because you want God to end poverty in your life and your family, delays, all kinds of challenges. I need you to know that Jesus is in this place. Hallelujah. And the Lord began to talk to me about a few things and I'll emphasize them um, there are different kinds of miracles that will happen in this place there are miracles that will involve our bodies healings there are miracles that will involve our spirits salvation there are miracles that will require satan being expelled from within our midst whether possessing or influencing whatever it is there are miracles that will require a shift in our mindsets are you listening to me and so it's important for our hearts to be open because i understand there are people who just came here probably not having expectations and we don't know what it is that god wants to do in our lives i want you to know that god wants to transform you have an expectation god doesn't just want to touch you he wants to transform you bible says that Saul turned into another man hallelujah praise the lord now i want to talk about certain things before we even start ministering 
our goal listen to me our pride is not to keep laying hands on people and getting people healed and getting people delivered our pride and our our aspiration is to see that everyone seated here becomes a carrier of the glory of god hallelujah such that you are the one who will go and begin to work the miracles hallelujah i look forward to times when our miracle services will just be thanksgiving services where it will be testimonies also because if your neighbor came sick as you are holding his hands just to start the service he's healed hallelujah do you believe that i'm going to be examining the root causes of sick diseases number one The Lord told me to emphasize this and this is very important. Disobedience. Disobedience to the principles of God. Now listen. There are many believers who do not obey the written word of God but are running up and down trying to chase and search for the voice of the Spirit. The only proof that you will respect the voice of the Holy Ghost is if you, is if you can believe the principles of God. The written word of God the Bible says you cannot love God who you have not seen if you cannot if you don't love your brother who you have seen God has left the word of God the written word the living logos of God inspired by the Holy Spirit so when we fail to live according to the standards of the word of God then we grant access to Satan to step into our lives there are several believers although we are born again please listen the miracle service has started although we are born again although we are filled with the holy ghost we have not been able to align ourselves to god's principles god's ways of doing things john 14 verse 21 says he that keepeth my commands he that keepeth my commands he is the one who truly loves me he said and i will love him and the father will love him and we will manifest ourselves to him john 14 21 he says he that keeps my commands not he who sings and says lord i love you and i will obey you he that keeps my commands are you listening to me disobedience not many people are disobedient to the direct rima the voice of the spirit but we are disobedient to the principles of god's word let me tell you something prayer will not replace obedience fasting will not replace obedience they all have their place but you will never replace disobedience with other spiritual things plead the blood do whatever you need to do let me show you an interesting scripture second corinthians chapter 10 please let's run i don't plan to teach for long second corinthians chapter 10 verse 6 second corinthians chapter 10 verse 6 are we there let's read it together one to read and having in a readiness to punish all disobedience when when your obedience is complete you only have the right to punish disobedience when your obedience is what is disobedience non-compliance the bible says our bodies are the temple of the holy ghost if satan brings sickness that's an act of disobedience to god are you listening to me but he said when our obedience is complete then authority is given unto us to punish disobedience Jesus speaking says Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself in me so long as Satan can find anything that represents death he has a legal access to your life a legal access to your body hallelujah and so the first miracle is the miracle of obedience that you come to a point where you realize that the Word of God is not just something to hold and feel spiritual when you are going to church on Sunday or do a devotional in the morning that it becomes your life and death i always quote this scripture my son pay attention to my word the bible says incline your ears to my sayings 
he said do not let them depart from out of thy mouth keep them in the midst of your heart they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh hallelujah a believer is not just one who has confessed Jesus as Lord a believer is one who has made up his mind to be governed by the Word of God hallelujah in life and in death that you live by the Word of God having the readiness to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete hallelujah Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 it says it shall come to pass that day if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to obey to observe and to do all that is written therein it says that I'll cause these blessings to follow you and to overtake you and you shall be set on high above all the nations if you are willing to obey to live by the principles of the word let me tell you something the word of God and does not want to share a place with other ideologies it comes to replace them hallelujah this is the reason why a lot of believers find it difficult to adjust to the word of God because we have our own ideologies that we came to the kingdom with hallelujah and when you come you create a little space and say let lord let your word stay here while culture stays here while my mindset stays here no the lord is going to say my word comes to take away and bring in the new the word of god does not come into you to share space with other ideologies for a lie is anything that god did not say no matter how true it is listen no matter how real it is so as far as god is concerned the sickness in your body is a lie because he never spoke it to you so you bring that lie before him and allow him the truth when you know the truth that truth will set you free are you getting blessed tonight obedience say after me i receive grace to be obedient yes there are so many things so many families have given satan access to their lives prayer warriors notwithstanding bible study teachers notwithstanding pastors notwithstanding i'll take just one example in the area of obedience hallelujah to be addressing the issue one of the issues that the lord emphasize to me again and again is the issue of poverty hallelujah there are many families that satan has entered in and kept them perpetually bound do you know poverty is not lack of money poverty is the influence of demonic spirits upon your mind that hinders you from obeying the principles of god as regards your finances hallelujah the economic principle of god is tied to the law the law of sowing and reaping genesis chapter 8 verse 26 22 he told noah he said as far as the earth remains see time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease shall not cease hallelujah no matter how much anointing oil you bring even if they draw a cross on your whole body there are principles are you listening to me Malachi chapter 3 that's the foundation on which the blessing of the Lord in the life of a believer is hinged on from verse 8 he says will a man rob God will a man rob God I hope you know he was talking to his covenant nation Israel he was not speaking to the heathen nation will a man rob God he said wherein have we robbed me he says 
but he said wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and what say after the tithes and offerings the bible says verse 9 it says you are cursed with a curse listen this one is not the cause of the law is the cause of disobedience and robbery ye are caused with a cause for ye have robbed me even this whole nation verse 10 it says bring ye all how many help me follow me how many bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house he says and prove me test me I stake my reputation at this. Here we say the Lord of hosts, if I will not, blessing number one, open the windows of heaven. The last time the windows of heaven were open, we saw that quails and manna fell. He said, prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven. Open heavens. Number two, and pour you out a blessing not many blessings pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive blessing number three it says and i will rebuke the only place in scripture where god says i will handle satan for you other parts he says Res resist the devil and he will flee but this one it says on account of being a faithful tighter i will rebuke the devourer there are many families that what they are suffering is the activity of the devourer they thought it was because they didn't have job now your father got a job now he's even a director nothing has changed that's the devourer the moment you receive your salary that's when everybody in your village is sick and then it just goes the moment the money is finished they become well by themselves no prayer no no oil no nothing it's called the devourer You buy a new car. You say, let me just test it. And you come back with only the glass of the car. Because of a fatal accident that happened somewhere. That's called a devourer. Are you listening to me? A devourer. It says, and he. That means the devourer is a person, not a thing. Still talking about the devourer. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before her time in the field saith the lord verse 12 he says and all nations shall do what that's a testimony they will give about your life all nations shall testify that you are blessed he said for ye shall be a delight some land Bula, a delight some land these are the seven prophetic blessings that follow Titus. Every time you talk about anything, believers are excited. The moment you talk about finances, everybody just starts looking for things to do. Handkerchief to clean their face. Um, do you have Bible? When you don't respect the principles of God, He will not honor you. Are you listening to me? So this is not just the issue of prayer. Many stingy believers want to cover the place of tithing for prophet's offering prophet's offering is not tithing i don't care if you give the prophet your whole life that's not tithe a tithe is a 10 portion let me shock many of you i'm going to say something that will disturb your spirit small your tithe is not 20 percent of your income your tithe is 10 percent period and full stop many men of god teach plenty because more money will come tithe is 10 percent obedience is better than sacrifice hallelujah where God calls a man and gives him a rema to give 90% of his tithe you cannot teach that as a theory to the church because it's not the universal character of God this is a rema that one person was sectioned out are you listening to me so many believers believe that when you don't tithe and the devourer comes you just run to a man of God and buy two new shoes what is your size 44 and then you just drop and say please pray for me no listen listen let me tell you something 
men of God are not herbalists, although some are, but real men of God are not herbalists. So, you don't try to bend spiritual principles using the anointing as an excuse. I don't have much. Me that they are giving me 2,000. Listen, don't say the day I have money I will give. You will never have. It is your giving that will take you to that point. So number one, tithing. Bishop Oedeko calls it your kingdom insurance. Hallelujah. Number two is your giving. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Let me give you my version. Don't give and what will happen? Say it. It will not be given unto you. Period and full stop. There is no point wasting your time asking. Don't give and it shall not be given unto you. Your, the lives of our family members are testimonies to this scripture. Their greed and stingy nature has kept them. And will it be enough for me? Every time God wants to bless you, He compels something to leave you. Read your Bible. We jump those places. We jump them and just read the end of the story and the blessings that follow. Are you following me now? Miracle service. Ah, Philippians 4.19. Paul says, my God shall supply. Hold on. He was talking to give us. Start reading from verse 12. Don't jump to verse 19. Start reading from verse 12. Those who committed themselves to give. And Paul said, my God. Many of you say, my God shall supply my need. That blessing is from a receiver to a giver. Paul said, my God shall supply your needs, you who have given. But many of us, you are the giver, you are the receiver. My God shall supply my needs. Uh -uh. Read your Bible, that's not what it says. No matter who you are, let me tell you something. God is no respecter of persons, but is a respecter of his principles. up your mind that you will begin to tithe but i've been tithing for one year i didn't see any results continue the bible says if the cloud be full of rain they will empty themselves are you listening to me be committed don't come to the house of god empty-handed i know there are ministers that have turned the whole money thing everything in church is money 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 you sow for everything everything even teaching that you don't understand you just run and come and drop seed i'm not against coming to drop seed are you listening to me i'm just saying that god is more interested in our growth than our religion yes. hallelujah very important when you tithe and you give whenever you hear that there is a project in the house of god don't keep quiet and say ah these people want to eat our money again no no take it seriously solomon said i will not give god what will cost me nothing the bible says he he bought a land and offered therein a thousand bond offerings and the bible says that same night not the next day he didn't send an angel god himself came and said solomon you have touched me the bible says gather unto me my people they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice if you are not an ardent giver forget about increase are you getting blessed tonight you see that this is not just the issue of fasting and prayer or confessing the word of god you must do many of us are tight as you only tight once then after four months you think god is afraid of you let me tell you something if jesus if god the father did not spare jesus when he became a sinner he will not spare you we need to understand this jesus turned to the father and said eloi eloi lama sabachthani and the father did not respond hallelujah righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne so your first determination tonight is that you will become a tighter buy envelopes don't look for it when the money comes your needs are plenty buy envelopes your tithe is not your last 10 percent when you do everything you just calculate uh, 170 2005 
85 then you just check your pocket some of you come to give tithes let me teach you how to give tithes don't just squeeze money and put in your pocket and while they are praying you are just checking and 200 naira comes you push it down you bring 100 naira and say god knows it's 1000 and then you stand the bible says honor the lord it is a gift to the lord your tithe bring it to honor the lord how do you honor someone when you cook food to honor somebody you put it in your heart and say taste and see if it's sweet you package it are you listening to me buy envelopes as soon as money comes into your hands you may not be able to give tithes of 200 300 200 but this is what i do some of those little little amounts you can't pick out tithes from 10 errors in one error so when a bulk amount comes i remove and by faith i remove what i call a representative fraction i say lord i know that it was within the range of one to five thousand naira that came as miscellaneous i'm adding this 500 naira by faith and i'm releasing it to cover for it are you listening to me be faithful in your tithing we live in a hostile country people don't you think that your lack of adherence to god's word will be good for you begin to build send vapor to the cloud right now let your clouds be full so that when you begin to step out it will begin to rain hallelujah one last thing i'll talk about for finance and then i'm done the bible never said god will send money from heaven there have been a few miracles like that in the fish and the rest but they didn't happen many times meaning it will happen many times that way in your life you open your wallet one day and saw 1000 it will not continue to happen every day that was a miracle to salvage you encourage you and show you god's love hallelujah when you tithe and you give listen to me the heavens are open over you the favor of god comes upon you let me tell you something the favor of god does not bring you financial freedom the favor of god sets you on a pace and brings seed for you brings wisdom for you brings the connection for you it is your application of the principles of god that's why you can give and say ah a breakthrough happened somebody called me and they gave me a job somebody called me and they gave me a 10 million naira that's not all you need in this life that's a seed that is supposed to meet wisdom that is already waiting and it should change your life are you listening to me the place of diligence in building yourself there are many of us that all of the laws of finances we have neglected them i have been shouting this thing for years you will never get blessed above your mindset god himself will stop you from getting there there are many stingy and greedy people they know nothing about money there are many ministries they know nothing about financial planning they know nothing about leadership and corporate finance and administration yet they want god to bless them with one billion he will not it doesn't work that way let me show you something quickly matthew 25 i shared this scripture somewhere i think i was talking to a few people let me show you something very interesting and then we'll wrap up I want us to really receive i don't just want us to come and laugh and rejoice it's not fair you are spending your time some of us are coming from far and from near matthew 25 are you there it says then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto what then the first revelation is they are all virgins are you listening to me so the story is about 10 virgins not five virgins and five other castaways or prostitutes ten virgins it says they took their lamps thy word is a word lamp to my feet and a light to my path that means they had the word of god are you listening to me they had the word of god let's read on and went forth to meet the bridegroom verse two five of them were wise so ten of them took lamps but the bible says five were wise and five were foolish although they were virgins although they were believers although they were the bride of the bridegroom the bible says five were wise five were foolish read on and they that were foolish this is what they did that made them foolish they took lamps so they had the word of god are you listening to me but the bible says and they took no oil with it 
I hope you know the lamp was burning. When you read from Amplified, it tells you extra oil. Not just oil. There was already oil. Hallelujah. That's a type of the inspiration, the anointing, the grace of the Spirit. But the wise took extra oil in their vessels. Not the lamp. But the Bible says we have this extra this treasure in where now he said they took extra oil in their vessels follow me i want to show you a powerful revelation so that's what made some wise they only catered for now and every time there are many of you in church the moment they begin to Be this the bible says the foolish ones were myopic they took their lamp they did not know that it requires more oil because it's burning the bible says the wise ones took extra there are things god is giving you now that are extra they don't look spiritual but these are the extra oil when you tithe when you give god opens you those extra ideas those extra information you just step into a bookstore and you see a book management and god is saying buy it he said but god i'm a faithful usher god is saying get it extra oil the foolish people say no i'm just looking for anointing if it's anointing and five ways to study your bible god is saying get those extra oil listen this is very important the bible says some got extra oil some did not and all of them went in watch what happened all of them slept because they were waiting for the bridegroom and he didn't come the bible says at a particular point there was a shout and they said rise up the bridegroom is here what happened because it had been burning those who had extra oil in their vessels did what they found out that there was an emergency situation and so they had to take advantage of the extra oil are you listening to me and now they began to pour it and the alarm came back And those who were foolish what happened to them the bible says they had no oil they had lamp the lamp was burning but it was about to die and it was it was obvious that it was not enough to sustain them till the arrival of the bridegroom guess what happened in any case you will still buy that extra vessel the trouble is when they began to say help us the people say no we cannot help you we got enough for ourselves they say go to the buyers that means the buyers were always there but the people neglected it when the buyers were marketing and saying come and buy extra oil say no 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 are you not seeing how bright my lamp is they say it may not make sense now we don't know how long the bridegroom will stay they say no no he will come now are you getting blessed when the lord showed me this it opened me up everything god leads me to i don't play again if god says learn something about sweeping go ahead you're a man of god but learn it extra oil are you listening to me the bible says to a point that there will be no room to contain it because a day will come when the lamp of many will be growing dim paul had his knowledge of the jewish culture a time came it was not his anointing that saved him are you listening to me the romans were going to beat him and he said hold on let me tell you people something in, in the midst of the heat and the suffering hallelujah he began to prophesy in the midst of all of these things he began to speak what did he say he said i am a jew he said let me tell you i was trained under gamaliel a pharisee to the core ah they suddenly that was his extra oil a time came when he escaped in the and they went to an island called melita after the angel appeared to him and he said there shall be no loss there was no church and nobody to support him because they were actually taking him to kill him the bible says he went to his tent making and suddenly his tent making sustained him and he bought a house with it these were some of the extra oils are you listening to me get your extra oil get your extra oil because the revival that is going to happen let me tell you something the bible says see thou a man diligent in his business he shall not stand before me men he shall stand before kings he said the gift of a man when you begin to tithe god grants you opportunities for your gifts to rise up can i say something very honestly many men of god 
even those who are rich don't know why they are rich that's why they are not teaching their congregation correctly the men do not understand of course ministry is not business are you getting me but watch this if assuming aaron come please assuming aaron is a ceo of a company and he's sick and dying are you listening to me okay thank you very much hallelujah and then i lay hands on him and he gets healed are you listening to me and then he decides to say man of god the money i would have gone to the hospital with the hundred million i sow into your life watch this is it not the gift of god that work in a man who has disciplined himself to find it and he has he has brought it to meet a need is that correct are you listening to me and because the bible says he shall not stand before me men he receives the reward many of the men of god think it's because they are preachers that they are getting blessed the answer is no they have paid the price and they have built something are you listening to me i am blessing is that correct i am doing something to your mind god is going to use us to heal you and so when you come to honor us is the same thing that happens when somebody packages a product and goes to give someone and he is blessed for it are you listening to me because the way men of god teach they teach it in such a way that everybody wants to be a man of god because they have made it look like if you're a man of god you cannot get blessed what of the person who is not called into a fivefold ministry how did god package his finances are you listening to me the gift of a man don't let anybody deceive you the gift of a man god will use your witty inventions god will use your giftings god will use your ideas and he will grant you grace and the anointing of the spirit is upon it and he will open you up to an endless realm of blessing say amen god bless you sir after you have done all of this then you can now begin to pray and speak the word and say lord i speak increase to my finances and then follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise let me tell you brothers and sisters there is no other way i know in the bible that you will arrive to lasting blessings even for your family no matter how hard working you are if you are not a tighter you are in trouble no matter how much you are tighter you are if you are not diligent to open yourself to other areas of christ and other areas of the wisdom of his word you will not receive anything the bible says get wisdom get understanding they said exalt and she shall promote you she shall put an end an ornament of glory a crown of glory upon your head where thou dost embrace her he said i riches dwell with prudence then i have knowledge of witty inventions he said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches say it's god's desire to bless me and it's god's desire to bless my family say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be a tither i kill greed in my life i am a faithful tither a consistent tither i am a giver say it i am a giver i invest in the house of god then God will bless you the second thing the Lord spoke to me about is fear fear one of the root causes listen to me one of the root causes of sicknesses and infirmity is fear listen statistics has it to say that over 80 percent of the things we fear do not actually happen 80 percent of the things we fear don't happen hallelujah hebrews chapter 2 verse 15 the bible says and to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage what does fear do it keeps you in bondage fear fear of the unknown there are many people you are working in a hospital every day you are busy crying and say hey will i catch hiv i'm giving hiv patients this and the day you touch an hiv patient and the needle touches you say hey, 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 it has happened fear 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 you go to see the doctor for a medical checkup and the doctor is reading a book you think he's nodding over your situation and you start lamenting say hey it has happened 
and that seed is sown into you do you realize there are many people who were sick and did not know that were sick they were very healthy until the day the doctor told them this is wrong with you suddenly they started emanciate if the doctor had not told them i tell you they would have been bubbling and laughing the day they had that report that was the day that ministration of death happened fear fear of death you want to travel fear you want to start a business or a company or a corporation fear you want to start a ministry fear the bible says for god has not given us the spirit of what fear second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 for god say for god has not given me the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind fear is a demonic spirit many of you as you are coming for the miracle service satan will be speaking to you and say are you sure are you sure you'll be healed this is your situation have you not gone you traveled abroad you went for healing you did whatever you were around in miracle service january february march april you were not healed what is the guarantee that you'll be healed now prophecies came words of knowledge came but you were not healed fear 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 keeps people in bondage you must conquer fear are you listening to me say i refuse to fear there are many people here god has been speaking to you build your house build your house you just laugh you check your account and you see there is ten thousand there god said build your house you don't even have the courage to check and see if there is land available many of our fathers are like that they are reaching many people when they begin to reach retirement age what happens fear they become aggressive different kinds of do you know that many diseases high blood pressure stroke they are psychological sicknesses hallelujah many of them are psychological sicknesses lack of money lack of help lack of trouble lack of this a man is giving out his daughter is afraid will she die hell what will happen in this nigeria you want to travel abroad people are laughing with you you are crying will i die fear say i refuse to fear say it one more time i refuse to fear people are not getting married the moment you check you are 23 years old you are going for every counseling you know they say how old are you, you say 23 and the woman says, ah so what's the hurry for he said forget oh i'm not playing that's how the ones who went before me waited now they are 37 fear and satan begins to minister fear to you i hope the word of god is setting you free because that's a miracle some of you need right now you write an exam and you did well you cross check it and you got everything but you are more afraid than the people who didn't even do the exam you are going around meeting the lecturer please just solve the questions let me just be sure ah hey, the way this thing is doing my my heart many diseases that we have today are as a result of fear are you listening to me no matter how hands are laid on you if you do not conquer that fear it will come back have you seen people come again and again to join healing lines they are healed they go back then they come back again i refuse to fear I refuse to fear hallelujah I refuse to fear let the courage Joshua when Moses gave him the button he looked at two point something million people angry people and Joshua was afraid and God said be strong come on be strong you're a young man but be strong and courageous as I was with Moses so I will be with you say the Lord is with me I refuse to be afraid your father calls you and says Tor, you're of age now 200 level is not a joke i didn't get to 200 level you start paying your school fees from now and you receive that news and fear comes you suddenly begin to check which of my uncles which of my aunties every time an angel appears to bring us messages from god what do they start 
fear not they know the people they are dealing with so they say fear not relax fear not tell yourself fear not hallelujah someone met me one time and said ah the way you walk and you do the things that you do ah don't you think you need rest you know this is how it starts one day high blood pressure comes i said the day you hear that i have high blood pressure i say it with all authority and by the sure message of god you know that's a lie there is no reason there is no reason hallelujah the worst that can happen is that i will die when i die people mourn and say ah joshua selma <laughs> and then that's all after two weeks you continue no matter how you love me you will cry and continue life no matter how i love you i will go and leave you and look at and join the cloud of witnesses and say air on fire hallelujah fear of death is the greatest kind of fear when you conquer that one you are alive until that until you conquer the fear of death you are still existing hallelujah i was coming back from lagos this morning and see i'm telling you it will take a long time for nigerians to recover from what happened the plane crash i i mean i saw somebody videotaping uh, as in from his phone his blackberry he sat in front of me and he was just snapping everything i said what is going on in this guy's mind now he's saying in case in case oh our hearts go for the families that are that were we prayed for them here and we encouraged them but i want you to be full of faith your fear does not help anything it hurts everything fear has never helped any man 10 spies 12 spies came back and 10 said ah he said moses you're a wicked man thank god we came back alive are you joking we ate of the food but we're not going there again joshua and caleb said we are well able let us go up at once at once many of you are afraid to confront your life hallelujah to confront us go and apply for a job you say me i read psychology eh? and the holy spirit said go and drop your offer in the bank you're saying psychology third class i can't mock myself i've laughed at myself alone in the room fear fear hallelujah it's time for you to get married god is telling you that's your wife here and every time you just pass and say hey god and you do as if you are going to the bathroom and he said lord how do i compose myself bible said when you stand before them you shall not think of what to say for in that very hour it will not be you speaking and all the brothers say He said, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor them say. It's called Anakazo. The compelling power of the Spirit. So you better start listening to what your father and mother is telling you. Hallelujah. The last thing, joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. I know many of us don't know where this scripture is. We always quote it. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. The reason why many believers are weak is because we lack joy. Nehemiah chapter 8. It says, are you there? Okay. Nehemiah chapter 8. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen. It says, and he said, go your way. Eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared he said for this day is holy unto our god neither be ye sorry afraid intimidated he said for the joy of the lord is your strength do you know there are many weak people they are weak because they don't know what is wrong with them it's lack of joy he said a merry heart do it good like medicine not a merry mouth joy is not just laughing a merriment of your heart a merry heart do it good like medicine but a broken spirit who can bear lack of joy 
there are many diseases right now that i'm telling you as i'm speaking you'll be living suddenly you find out that your blood pressure is coming back to normal no prayer the joy of the lord becomes strength for you in the spirit the bible says for with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation the word salvation there in the greek is the word soteria healing prosperity breakthrough with joy with joy hallelujah the system designs people to be angry hallelujah just go on the street and see everybody drivers are angry conductors are angry those entering the car are angry government officials are angry you want to listen to the news the moment the song you know the, the song is playing you're already frowning let's see what they will tell us is eating your spirit and the next thing you wake up with pains all over your body they go to the hospital they cannot find what it is i tell you it's lack of joy 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 even medical science tells us that happy and joyful people live long hallelujah there are some of you because of anger your face has assumed that shape even when you are happy people have to find out whether you are you are really so or not makes you hostile to your wife hostile to your husband hostile to your children lack of joy there are many of you as soon as you are going to meet your parents they are angry not because they are not happy to see you fear lack of joy they know school fees will come and other things and unnecessary anger why is there too much salt in this food and you know there's no so there's no too much salt lack of joy are you getting blessed tonight there are many of you who are angry with your roommates one month ago they used your pot they didn't wash it lack of joy is spirit you go to pray and you cannot pray after 10 minutes you don't even know when you stopped and you are thinking i just said bah, 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 bah. you are angry a broken spirit the bible calls it hallelujah yes we have people who are angry sad angry at the government angry at your lecturer the moment your lecturer steps in you are eyeing the person all through you don't even know the lecture has started angry at exams you see timetable you just stand why see cultivate an attitude of joy are you listening to me you're cooking your roommates don't know whether they are the ones hurting you or you are just angry you are hissing 20 times the people who are laughing with you they don't know whether they are the ones who have offended you or not hallelujah lack of joy the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord the joy of the lord the joy of the lord it is my strength hallelujah the joy of the lord as we begin to minister to you be happy be excited let me tell you something satan can never dwell in the realm where there is joy and praises that's why the bible says god himself inhabits the praises of his people once your life is full of joy you are happy you are excited not necessarily you are not eating no you are hungry but you are excited you are even comforting somebody who just finished a plate of amala and the person is sad and you are comforting the person and the person says have you eaten you say no let's say you mean it someone is shouting and angry and say ah my father didn't send me money and you see someone who tells you you are lucky i don't even have a father and a mother but i call him faithful it's only 30 30 000 naira they are sending to me and somebody says the last the only thing they gave him from the village was half of his transport and faith took him and now he's in final year what is killing your joy 
I know it looks very simple. The first time I had this was I had Joan Hunter, the daughter of Charles and Francis Hunter, talking about it. And one day the Lord opened my eyes and I began to see that many sicknesses are as a result of lack of joy. It eats you up. You see someone getting lean. It's not HIV. It's not liver problem. A young man of 21 thinking as if he's 50 years. You are not married. You don't have a wife. You are just thinking. Hallelujah. From the day you wrote jam, you are thinking. You are just thinking. Once you see any letter, you and M, it threatens you. Ah, you and me, jam. Can you learn to be confident in life and allow the joy of the Spirit come upon you? The Lord asked me to preach these things. Disobedience, fear, and lack of joy. A merry heart do it good. Why did he link a merry heart to medicine? It has a therapeutic effect. Where you smile and you are happy. You see your roommates and you get up and say, bless you. Bless you. Your roommate is frowning and say, there's no problem. I know I'm sorry. Say, God, over my dead body for me to say I'm sorry. I've been keeping quiet. I'm not a fool. I will let you know that I'm not stupid. What is killing you? Can't you see? When you hold someone down, part of you must be down to keep holding the person. So you will never move forward yourself. When you release people and let them go, lack of joy brings offense. Everything annoys you. Food that you know is nice. Why is there bone in this fish as if this is the first time you are eating it? You get angry at your boss in office. You get angry at everybody. When you come to church, you just look and say, why is I keep smiling as he's playing like keyboard? Can't he keep quiet? Why must the protocol stand here? You see, let me tell you, when there is no joy, you become edgy. You are offended. Everything gets you angry. Why did my room and my, my seatmate put perfume? And he's reacting one kind. Oh God, your problem is lack of joy. That's why people laugh under the anointing. A renaissance of joy. God brings joy. Even God sits in the heavens and laughs. So as we arise and begin to trust God to do a quick work in this place tonight, I want you to know that once there is joy in you and there is no fear, many of you may not really need any miracle for your body again you will suddenly stand up and find out that that pain is not there because that's the strength that satan had you call it fever you call it recurrent fever but now you are seeing that the real thing is lack of joy worry the bible dedicated one whole chapter to address the issue of worry he said who among you by worrying will add a cubit to his hand he said, look, consider the lilies of the field. They do not sow nor reap. They are breaking a law. Yet, your heavenly father provides for them. He says, not even Solomon adorned in all his regalia is as one of these. Is God not faithful? Is he not? That you are alive today is proof that there is hope for your life. I have HIV. They've told me I'll live for two years. Whose report will you believe? Let the joy of the Spirit radiate through you. Rise up on your feet. Go ahead and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. God will do amazing things in this place shortly. Bless the Lord. Praise to be obedient. Make sure you are praying. Praise to be obedient. Praise to be obedient. Pray against fear. I conquer fear. The fear of death. Fear of failure. Fear of sickness. Fear of my needs being met. God is able. God, God does not give you. You can.
cannot get where God does not take you. You cannot go. Fear of marriage. Fear of children. Fear of the past. Lift your voice and say, I can't I conquer fear. Fear that brings depression. Fear that empowers Satan to keep sickness in your body. Command fear to go. I stop being afraid of who will sponsor me. Whether the business idea will thrive, whether the ministry will thrive, whether I will get married, whether I will build the house, whether I will graduate, conquer that fear, whether my project will be received, whether I will be promoted in my office. Pray, I conquer that fear in the name of the Lord Jesus. Will the sickness leave me? Yes, it will. Now go ahead and prophesy. Say joy. I've got joy. It's like a river. Let the joy of the Spirit become strength to my bones. They could take a part of us. That my great goals, offense, unforgiveness, all the things that lack of joy brings. Prophesy. Say my spirit will not be broken. The Bible says a broken spirit. A broken spirit. Who can bear? Lack of joy can kill. Lack of joy will depress you. I choose to be full of joy. Joy. The oil of gladness. The garment of praise. Hallelujah. Now, as we begin to minister, we're going to be very fast because of time. Hallelujah. God is going to be bringing instant miracles. Instant miracles to people. Hallelujah. When that happens, please, it's good to testify. Once, even if the miracle has not been complete, once that started, locate the ushers very quickly. Let's see if we can have a few testimonies. We'll be really fast. We may not be able to go into so much of details. Hallelujah. Where is the family that came from Bauchi? Let's start from there. This is not word of knowledge. I was told. Where is the family that came from Bauchi? Are you here? Come out quickly inside and outside. All right, come quick, 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 quick. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come, sir. Okay. Hallelujah. You came all the way from Bauchi. I want you to know that you will not go back the same. Are you listening to me? But the devil is oppressing you. I'm seeing a whirlwind around you. This is what I'm seeing. You have been so oppressed. Hallelujah. You believe that? Hallelujah. And God will set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. You came all the way because you have faith. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy the works of the evil one. Hallelujah. Pray for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thou devil, take your hands off his body. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. I command that devil of the name of 
Jesus. She yes, Be delivered right now. I set you free. See, I see that the plan is even to take his life. Before the end of this year, this is the plan to kill this guy. You see that? That they'll go and lock you up in a place where they lock madmen. And from there you will just sleep and you will not wake up. It happened last year. You see that? It happened last year. They went and locked him. Psychiatry at this same time. The plan is that this, at the beginning of next month, you are supposed to go to a psychiatry. And that's where you will go and die. Praise the Lord. Last year, same time, this month, I was being locked due to some, at least some demonic attacks, which influenced me in order to attack my parents with weapons. And I was arrested by the police. Iron, metal, knife. I this was. It. I'm seeing it right before me. I was arrested by the policeman. Later on, they now found out that I was mentally as affected. They took me to the psychiatric. But to God be the glory, the psychiatrist uh, overall uh, says I'm not mad, but it seems I'm possessed. No, you, you'll be free right now. Oh, no, come on. You came for Koinonia. You will know you met God tonight. Are you listening? God reveals to redeem. If God has, has, has revealed your situation, you'll be free from it. Hmm? The scourging tongues of men, the influences of friends, look at them right before you. Hmm? Listen, look at me. Love is a command, relationship is not. Wave your friends goodbye where you go to bow. Are you listening to me? Many of your friends are not good people. Are you listening to me? Tell them goodbye and come to church and find healthy friends who love God and are serious. But I want to pray for you right now. Are you listening to me? Say in the name of Jesus. Yes. I am free. In the name of Jesus. I am free. I am free. All right. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I release the power of God upon you right now. No, 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 not you. I'm praying for you now. I command that devil influencing you over your mind now. Be free, be gone by the power of the Holy Spirit. Psychosomatism, go. Demonic influence, go. From today, you begin to behave normally. Now, right now, right here, in the name of Jesus Christ, I see something is happening to you. I'm seeing like something is leaving you. That's what I'm seeing. I'm, something is coming out from inside you. That's what God is showing you. In the name of Jesus, I command that demonic thing to leave you right now. Hallelujah. There's a wild spirit that entered this guy. I command that devil. Come out of him right now. Come out of him right now. Come out of him right now. In the name of Jesus. Look. See what is happening. You see the way he's breathing. This is the power of God. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce you free. Liberty for you. Liberty from today. No more returning to the psychiatry. By faith, I call you perfectly holy. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. You are free. You are free, sir. Listen to me. God is bringing restoration to your family. Are you listening to me? Financial restoration. God is blessing your family. Who is Suleiman? Do you know anybody called Suleiman? I'm seeing a name, Suleiman. No, no, I'm saying it may not be related to your family. I'm just saying, who is Suleiman? You know anyone called Suleiman? Who is he? Mohammed Suleiman is your brother. Yes. Go and tell him that the Lord is going to bring him into a great season of favor. Suleiman, the Lord says, I should tell you, go and tell Suleiman. Are you listening to me? What does he do? He's 
he just finished his hnd at federal polytechnic but he said but god is saying i should tell you go and tell him i didn't know that he has just finished up to now he's disturbing me to bring my credentials he's disturbing me every day to say go and tell him that the lord says that he's entering a new season of financial favor i pray for all of you as a family right now stretch your hands sense of god in one minute let's pray for them you came all the way from bauchi return with testimonies perfection upon this gentleman and then upon you all of you you will carry an anointing and go back with it in the name of jesus i pray that the fire of the spirit will burn in you the fire of the spirit will burn in you the fire of the spirit for god will use you mightily my brother you will be used as a mighty tool in the hands of god you will be a great teacher of the world and you will move in signs and wonders that's what the spirit of god is saying god bless you go back to your seat hallelujah hallelujah the couple that came from abuja or kaduna you called me you spoke with me about it um hakim is he here listen to me i want you to go tomorrow find the nearest hospital and go and conduct a test are you listening to me it will end right now the power of god i'm going to minister to you i already sense the power of god for you oh yes you will be healed lift your hands the power of god comes upon you strong thou devil in the name of the lord jesus come out of her now now come out of her now in the name of jesus christ let the fire of god burn every shaft inside you right now the fire of god comes upon you strong every chaff be burned now 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 in the name of jesus that devil of infirmity leaves you it leaves you it leaves you it leaves you God the power of God is upon this lady come sir what do you do you work with very end year Nigerian Defense Academy Nigerian Defense Academy are you due for promotion not yet you are not yet due for promotion God will do something in your life that will shock your colleagues are you listening to me because I saw I saw something like like uh, soldier cap that's why i'm asking you whether you, but you are not a military man so what are you doing in nda an accountant there. you are an accountant there yes. god is going to promote you and he will increase you hallelujah i'm seeing a file what is this file that i'm seeing uh, is there a problem in your office problem in your office you are afraid to tell me see there is no shame here this is the family of god there is a problem in your office there is a problem in your office money that was released for something and i know there is a problem in your office god is revealing it to help you you work in the accounts department you know the way soldiers are they'll just send all of you away but god wants to promote you soldiers don't take nonsense but let me pray for you right now the lord says for me to release upon you an oil of gladness above your fellows hallelujah you believe that in the name of the lord jesus an oil of gladness comes upon you strong receive it right now receive it right now in the name of jesus an oil of gladness you go back with a mantle of glory please two of you come you and her hold your hands together For what God has joined, let no man put asunder. In the name of Jesus, I declare, no death. You will have children. 
by the power of God. No one will resist you. Not sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Appreciate them, please. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know how we'll do it, but we'll be really fast. Praise God. We'll be really, really, really fast. If you came here with any heart problem, please come out quickly. Run out quickly. Heart problem, hole in your heart. Um, any heart problem, please let's save time. Heart problem, come out quickly. Heart problem. Those with heart problem, hole in your heart and breathing problem as a result of. Quick, 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 please come out. We have to be really fast. All of you lift your hands. Those who are sick, the power of God will begin to come upon you like heat. The moment that happens, as soon as I pray for these people, I want those people to come out quickly. Heart problems. It will go, look at me, my dear. What's wrong with you? It's going to leave you now. Out of her, in the name of Jesus, perfection for you and wholeness. Go back to your seat. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. You, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Go and check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Locate the ushers the moment you get healed. God bless you. There's no time to uh, waste in the name of Jesus. What's wrong with you? Pneumonia. Pneumonia. It's not just pneumonia. You have bronchitis too. You have bronchitis. The Lord heals you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Perfection for you in the name of Jesus. Perfection. What's wrong with you? Pneumonia and swollen heart. The swollen heart yes. is unusually enlarged yes. on one side of the heart. Yes. The Lord heals you now. Yes, I see it in the name of Jesus. I command perfection. Be healed now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. As I begin to release the healing power of God inside and outside, you're going to feel this is the sign God gives me. Hallelujah. Heat. Heat will come on your hand. Many of you, as you, you will be healed right there. Some of you will come out. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the healing power right now according to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. All over this building, let the heat, the fire of God is coming already upon you. The moment you sense that you're sick and you sense the heat, is heat. That's what God tells me. Heat. Real heat on your hands. I'd like you to leave your seat and come quickly. Quickly. Don't think about it. Leave your seat and come quickly. It's happening to men inside and outside. Or just help them and let them come. The moment that heat happens to you, the Lord is showing you, please hurry up. We are not, we don't have time to waste. Hallelujah. The heat coming upon your hands. Run out quickly. It's happening to people. I'm seeing it in the spirit. Don't walk. Run inside and outside. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. It's happening to people. That's the instruction God gives me. Heat. Strong heat on your hands. It doesn't matter what is wrong with you. Bring them quickly. Reggae take post the barrier. That heat. Lift your hands, everybody. Oh, let, let the heat come outside. Let it come upon you. Let us flow as the spirit washes. That heat is a healing anointing. Satan, you are a liar. Heat quickly as that heat. Happens. As that it happens, Please hurry up. At the back, 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 at the
cause you healed totally. Don't let me stand up. What is wrong with you? Your teeth. It will go now. Are you listening to me? Go! Now, in the name of Jesus. Please stand up. Jesus wants. Please, ushers, bring all of those people under the influence of the Spirit. That devil is a liar. You came to a miracle service tonight. At the count of three, shout it as loud as you can. The power of God is all upon many of you outside. I'm singing. One, two, three. Let's go, 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 let's go
outside. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. There are still some of you outside. Are you ready? One, two, three. All of you here, that devil is a liar. Come out of her now. In the name of Jesus, out of her. Come out of her. That serpentine spirit. That's what I see. Come out of her. That's what I see. Five, five minutes we pray very quickly so they just come we lose words we are out of time we need to pray we need to pray for the request please come okay so John you come please while I was praying the Lord showed me a vision I saw heaps of envelopes and God says there's going to be a supernatural release of jobs tonight if you believe you just connect with it lord lord in the name of jesus who prophesy under this atmosphere let there be supernatural supernatural release of jobs for your people supernatural release of jobs for your people supernatural release of jobs for your people in the name of the lord jesus the lord gives me the name Chopper. i hear the name Chopper. you have sickness in your body if the topic that I'm talking about is here, just run quickly. Come by the Lord, just for the name Top by. Top by, if you are Top by, you are quickly, quickly, please. You are standing in your place, you are the one who is waiting for you. Hurry up, please. The Lord wants to hear Top by. Father, let me thank you. Thank you. Just lift up your hands. Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch our body now. Touch her. Touch her. Touch her. Touch her and bring healing to her. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I release healing, healing right now. Go in the name of Jesus around your stomach region and command supernatural healing. Bring it in the name of Jesus. Go, you are free. The Lord gives me another name again, Halima. I see Halima has 
this Alima that the Lord is talking about, you have sickness in your body. Halima, and you've been looking for a job. You've been seeking for a job for a while. The Lord is talking about with your sister or your dear just run out quickly. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Jay, Jay, I just want you to lift up your hands. I hear the Lord speaking to me about, about your father. God says there's a work of healing that he wants to do in his body. You are aware that he has a challenge in his body. Something connected to the blood region. God says he wants to do that work of healing in his body. And I hear God says within now the next one year, there shall be supernatural open doors for him. I see connection in high places. God says that connection shall even come somewhere around Abuja. That's where I'm seeing, outside of this group. And I declare that release in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mommy, just lift up your hands. God says he wants to touch you. God says you have been afraid and you have been carrying fear in your heart. There's a pain that you are carrying in your heart for many years. Something even connected to your husband. God wants to heal that pain. A loss connected to your husband. Mommy, where is he? Where is your husband? Look at him. Mommy. He's late. Your husband is late. That's what I'm talking about. The pain of your husband's death that you are carrying your heart for many years. God says he's going to heal that right now. And God says he's also going to touch your body. I see pain around your joints that God is going to heal. Around your knee region and your waist. And I'm going to just put your hand on your waist right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we command healing, 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 healing in the name of Jesus. And God says, death shall not come near your home. I see a business we are doing right now that God is beginning to prosper. Lord, we command that prosperity. Let that door be open supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Lord brings two families to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. My sister, God says, is breaking the hold of disappointment around your life. Disappointment even connected to men. You've had disappointment from one man to another. Several men have disappointed you. I'm sorry. But like you said, this is the family of God. Just put your hands on your head. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I break that curse. I break that curse. I break it now, now, now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Lord. Mommy, God says He's bringing restoration. So the injustice that you have experienced around you, God says He's breaking that hold in the name of Jesus. I will see some things connected to your little husband. And God says they shall call you. They shall call you and they shall seek to help you. I release that favor in the name of Jesus. God says for the people that you are sent to help you that will fly away from you. They are going to come to you right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus. The Lord gives you the name happiness. Happiness, happiness, happiness. If you are here just quickly. Happiness, happiness. There's something the Lord is showing you about your family. Happiness. Happiness. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you because you are breaking that yoke over her family right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I say, baby, you walk into this place. You came in with, your, with, with, with a liver disease. You came in with a liver disease, just lift up your hands. You came in here with a liver disease, just lift up your hands quickly. They told me that you have liver inflammation. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands. Let me command healing into your body. Let me command healing to those ones. Without liver disease, we command healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. God says he's breaking stagnation for your family. The financial situation that your fathers have to struggle with, God says he's breaking that home right now. I hear God says harvest is coming. Harvest is coming. Harvest is coming. Harvest is coming. And God says I take away sickness from him right now. Am 
I say the truth? God wants to heal your father right now. God says stroke shall not have a place in his body. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And that symptoms that you have suffered for a while right now. I command supernatural healing. Supernatural healing. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Among the three young men that came from Bauchi, I, I, I see somebody sick in one of your families. I'm seeing somebody lying on the bed, very sick, very ill. I say the person is bed with you. Where is that person? Among the three guys who came here. I like to present people for that person to run out quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm seeing somebody sick, lying as if they're reading. Who is that person? Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare healing, 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 healing to that lady right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we command total healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying somebody they stole your father's car just recently. Just recently, just look up your hands, they stole your father's car. God says there's going to be a supernatural restoration. Where is that person? They stole your father's car recently. God says there's going to be supernatural restoration. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because you command that restoration right now. In the name of Jesus. The angel of the Lord stood before me with a handkerchief. And the Lord says I should prophesy that he's going to wipe the tears of people's academics. That's what the Lord showed me. Listen. I saw him. That's why I was holding the handkerchief. I was just holding my handkerchief and playing around it. Hallelujah. I was just holding it and waiting for it. I thought he was going to prophesy. That's why I just kept quiet. How many of you believe this? In the name that is above every other name. Whether master students, whether PhD students, diploma students, according to that which was shown me in the spirit, I declare right now that every one of you who names the name of Christ and has cried, I command your crying to be over in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. For I see a meeting that is being done in the faculty of social sciences and I pray right now I see a meeting in the faculty of social sciences and it's going to affect the final residents. We prophesy that it will favor you. If you are in social sciences, I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcers. Lift your hands. Anyone with peptic ulcer. I command you, while this is going, ushers quickly, collect the prayer request inside and outside. Perfect ulcer, lift your hands. Lift it very high. In the name of Jesus, let the power of God touch you. Right now, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Perfect ulcer, be healed. In the name of Jesus. I command blindness. Blindness. Deafness of any sort, deaf ears be opened in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes be opened in the name of Jesus. Every bone condition in this place, please, while you are listening, be passing your prayer request quickly to the ushers. Bone conditions, right now in the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every bone condition be straightened, be healed in 
the name of Jesus. Cancers, tumors, lumps anywhere, ovarian cyst. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who came from places other than Zaria, run out here quickly, inside and outside. If you came from a place other than Zaria, come out quickly, for you won't go back the same. Please hurry up. Other than Zaria. Inside and outside. Any place other than Zaria. But you know that you met him, the King of Kings. This is not all. Someone is still sitting. The Lord is showing me this side. Come out quickly, please. We don't want you to go back the same. There's someone with a pain on your wrist. Check yourself. You've been healed now. A pain around your wrist. The Lord shows me healing around the wrist. Hallelujah. Among those of you standing, how many of you came to be healed? How many of you came for a healing, a healing related issue? Hallelujah. You and you. Who else? Hallelujah. Okay, I've, I've ministered to you. I want to make sure I minister to all of you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Lord, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you send them back with an anointing in the name of Jesus that every door that has been closed over your life that the Lord opens it in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you in ministry, I release a supernatural anointing that it will come upon you and engulf you that you will carry the fire of the spirit back to your ministries back to your places two of you God will use you very greatly in the name of Jesus for you will carry the fire of the spirit for you will carry the anointing of the Holy Ghost you will carry the anointing of the Holy Ghost of the Holy Ghost. Go with that anointing. Do signs, wonders. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Go with this anointing. I prophesy that whatever challenge it is that you came in, that the Lord solves it for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you are representing your families, I command that you will go back with a miracle for your families by the creative power of God's word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ God bless you, thank you for coming please run back here. let's have all the prayer requests here sorry we are rushing things we have to hurry up hallelujah hallelujah now lift your hands all of you we always do this during the meetings that there be impartations of signs, wonders and miracles we are not a powerless people. Hallelujah. We, only, we don't just believe in healings and miracles. But we believe that you will be carriers of this anointing. Hallelujah. And Lord I pray. I'm going to pray for everybody right now. That the power of God will come upon you. And the fire of God will engulf you. Let there be baptisms of the spirit. Let there be impartations. Miracles. Signs. Wonders. Anointings that will be received. Hallelujah. I'm about to begin praying so inside and outside lift your hands and connect with the spirit when I begin to shout release that's what God tells me just one word release the Lord tells me there will be mass impartations and baptisms ushers as much as possible if you can let's have those people the power of God is already moving in the name of the Lord Jesus Shikapakapasya release I command the release right now 
everywhere in this building from the choir down this stand outside I command a release lift your hands and receive it let the power and the fire of God fall right now from the ministers down let impartations begin Ushers, locate those people there is a strong impartation that God desires to happen. Bring them out. Reke te 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 ya. Reko she pasiba. Rafarienda. Reko is all over the building. All over. Inside and outside. All over. Move. Pateke te te baya. Reko se se te ya. Please ushers locate them. Reke te te ya le mausa. Miracle workers moving in signs. Everyone is receiving. Don't just wait till you're under the anointing. Lift your hands and receive. It's like fire and it's like rain outside. Fire and rain at the same time. At the same time. Let it fall like the dew of heaven. Pasheta pakaya, sem brekete brekete bai. Everyone is receiving something. Don't just stand looking at this here. It's happening to everyone. For your ministries, an impartation. For your businesses, an impartation. Go, Pastor Steve. Come, bring Pastor Steve. Bring him. Come, practice a portion. For you will carry a new anointing. A new anointing. A new anointing. a new anointing in the name that is above all things. New discernment. Fresh discernment by the Spirit of the living God. How about you to do? Say, 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 say,
Alléluia. New grace. New wine. In the name of Jesus. Oh, the power of God is still moving. At the same time, many things are happening. At the same time. At the same time. I don't know what it is, but I see an angel standing in this row, this row, this row. The power of God will begin to move in this row, this center row, this center row. There is an angel standing. It's the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. This very row, this row I stand before you. The angel of the Lord. For reasons I do not know, but he walks in the midst of you. Let there be a convocation of the angelic stirring anointings. Find them to flame. Stirring anointings. Hallelujah. The angel walks towards this place. I'm standing where the angel is standing. I'm standing and he says I should wave my hands. This is what the angel of the Lord says for me to do. I wave my hands. Fire. I wave my hands. I wave my hands. I wave my hands. I wave my hands.
Pastor William's wife, please, my God. At the same time, miracles are happening. Check yourselves. Bring them out. Set the group. Pastor William's wife. There is a great anointing. No, don't bring her here. There is a great anointing. It will shake you to your foundation. Stepping into a new level. But Joseph, of the prophetic, it will burn you like fire. Fire. Who is this lady? You come. Yes, he will answer you. Yes, he will answer you. Yes, he will answer you. For you step into a new oil. New grace, upon her like the fire and powerful by the power of the Holy Ghost. The last five rows at the back, the last five rows from my left to my right, the last five rows at the back, lift your hands. The last five rows. Receive a fresh impartation. The last five rows. The fire of God comes upon you. Comes upon you, bringing healing. Comes upon you, comes upon you. You will know the magic tonight. Even to families, healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain. I'm not afraid. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid. Listen, the Lord asked me to go around this road. Just you people here. I want to do what the Holy Ghost is asking me to do. Is a fire that I'm engulfing. Shabados, rekoto soko, mampre toske pa, rakato seke, rente koske pa, shipa kosha, mampre takabaya, seka prosa, inte kalika kosha, sente kebonsa. Hallelujah. Now. There is a heavy unction for healing. Please, the ministers, quickly. Let's just do this. I love this part of the miracle service because this is when mass miracles happen. We'll do this just for two minutes. Pastor Williams, said, yes. Listen, as we begin to pray, you will get confirmations of your answered prayer. Either by the ministry of the Holy Spirit or impartations to your families as soon as we begin to pray i assure you pastor suleiman come pastor steve come quickly hallelujah as we begin to pray let's pray in the unity of faith instrumentalists help us lord release miracles 
release miracles. of many Lord precious father we ask that in the name of Jesus Christ we ask that the fire of God will come upon this let it rise before you like an incense we release answers to prayers here in the name of Jesus we release answers to requests in the name of Jesus we command doors to be opened we command healings we command liberations in the name of Jesus Christ let the breakthrough of God come let the angels of God be released right this moment in the name of Jesus. We ask that answers be released. Answers be released in the name of Jesus. We pray. Hallelujah. Ministers, please. When you hold our hands as I prophesy, we'll do it in the unity of faith, the corporate anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to begin to make declarations we are holding hands i'm not just prophesying i want you to believe it please believe please believe please believe oh this is where ancient doors get opened believe worshipers help me i want to pray right now in the name of jesus for your academics every student in this place go forward Excel! 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 Supernatural intelligence! Supernatural intelligence! Supernatural intelligence! Ideas! In the name of Jesus! Ideas! In the name of Jesus! No more failure. No more failure. No more carryover. 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 We release five points. I said five points. Five points. Five points. First class. In the name of Jesus. Yes, you will excel. Yes, you will excel. I pray right now. Therefore, God, even thy God has anointed thee with an oil of gladness. The Kapo Zekebaya. That oil that distinguishes you, everyone under the sound of my voice, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Let it set you apart. Set you apart in your office, in your department, in your ministry. 
in your business, in your home. Set them apart. I pray right now of you in business or finance or any corporate work but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty a new level of inspiration like the dew of Hammon for your families I command dying businesses come alive dry bones live again dry bones live again dry bones live again Hallelujah. Changfa prophesied there is an unusual release of jobs and of opportunities. You may not need it, but your loved ones. How many of you are tired of praying for your loved ones for jobs? Now is the time. Lift your hands. As surely as the Lord lives, in the name that is above other names, whether it's job change, new jobs, right now in the name that is above other names i command for you and for your loved ones receive it in the name of jesus miracle jobs miracle jobs jobs without your interview yes i prophesy i prophesy under the unction of the holy one of israel under the corporate anointing of the servants of the minister barrenness barrenness enough is enough barrenness for yourself and for your loved ones the bible says we not now that it's not there for many are the children of the bodies than the children of other is with child i command miracle children now miracle children everybody in you be open everybody in you be open everyone without a room we create a new room right now in the name of jesus everything called delay in your life whether in marriage whether in relationship whether in your job the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of ahas i pray right now i command speed to your life speed to your life before december you will accomplish more than you have accomplished before december i prophesy supernatural restoration and I will restore I hear my spirit marriage is before December I don't know what this means but I speak as, as I hear marriage is before December but the Lord speaks and his hands will bring you to pass and I will restore to you the years that the canker world. What have you lost in your life? I want to prophesy to you right now. 
The Bible says that the Shunammite woman, the king, asked that, they should, that she should go back and certain soul was restored to her. I don't care what you have lost. I command the restoration in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every uncompleted project in this place, whether it's a house your parents are building, whether it's, I don't care what it is. If it has been done by man, then there is no limitation for you. I pray right now, the resources to complete every project, I release it in the name of Jesus. That when men say, there is a casting now, we speak over your life. Your testimony from tonight is that there is a lifting up. I command a lifting up. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. A new level of the understanding of the word of God. A new level. He brought to Jeremiah and he said, Eat it. And after he ate it, he said, Now go and speak. I command right now, especially to ministers of the gospel, unusual fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Unusual fellowship, unusual dreams, unusual impartation, visions of the night, visions of the day, angelic visitation, God will encounter. Let there be a sharpening of the gifts of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Every life here that represents a wilderness. In the name of Jesus. Let that wilderness tonight be counted for a forest. Be counted for a forest. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, I don't care where it is. Job chapter 5, he said, You shall be delivered from the scourging tongues of men. I pray that everywhere they talk about you, they will speak for good. They will speak for good. They will speak for good. I pray for uncommon favor that anointing that was upon Esther that anointing that opens doors that no man can explain not even you the recipient that anointing that will attract strangers and cause them to feed your flock and cause that your gates be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles I invoke that anointing of favor upon you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Grace to obey the word of God. I terminate fear from your life. Now, I terminate fear from your life. Let there be no fear. I command a wellspring of joy. Let the fountain of joy 
that is not based on circumstances be open from your spirit man that river of joy let it flow from within you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Listen to me. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. One of the greatest miracles that will happen in this place is the rest from sin. The Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Hallelujah. No matter what healing and what miracle has happened in this place, the greatest of all miracles is salvation. Hallelujah. The greatest of all miracles. Inside and outside, you are listening to me right now. And the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Everybody rise up on your feet just once and you sit down. You are here and you have not made up a decision for Jesus Christ. You may be a Christian. You may be a nice person inside and outside. Your friends have been talking to you about this Jesus. And the Holy Spirit keeps convicting you that there is room for a new life. Whether you've given your heart to the Lord before and you backslided and just left the path of God. Or this is your first decision. Inside and outside, the Lord of the Master calls you right now. I want you to leave your seat and run and come out. Leave your seat right now. And make a decision for Jesus Christ. Don't sit back there. You've made a decision once. Don't be ashamed of anybody. It's a blessing. Inside and outside, run. Leave your seat and come. Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Jesus calls you. You are welcome. We welcome you with the love of the Father. Appreciating them. Come on. Outside, we are still waiting for you. Appreciate them. As they come, this meeting was good for you. We love you. You are welcome. Welcome home. Welcome home. Those of you outside, as the Holy Ghost completes you, don't look at your friends. Leave them and run and come. This is the greatest decision. I don't care what it is you have done or what you have not done. No man condemns you. There is love for you tonight. For God so loved you. We are still waiting. The Holy Ghost is still convicting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Those of you in front, I salute you and I congratulate you for making this bold decision. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I want to tell you, welcome home. Hallelujah. As a family of faith, as the church of the living God, we receive you and we welcome you. This is a bold decision. Every one of us had to make this decision. Hallelujah. Now I want to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's my privilege and honor to lead you to the one who died for us. The one who is alive and lives forever. That at the end of our journey in this life, there is one whom we will dwell in his presence forever. Thank you for making this decision. Say after me, Lord Jesus. It's not a poem. Say it from your heart. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. Tonight, I accept you as my Savior. Be the Lord of my life. I hand over my life to you. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace and I denounce sin and Satan. I receive eternal life into my spirit. A new life begins for me. In the name of Jesus, I am born again. The Spirit of God lives in me. I am heaven bound. And I will live a victorious life here on earth. Please. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. 
check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.